Crystal, first off, congratulations on making the team. Thank you. Thank you so much. So <laughs> proud of you. How did you find out the great news? Um, I was in my apartment. I got a text message from Jill saying, are you awake? It was quite early in the morning. And I was like, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> and then my phone rings a couple minutes later and... She spills the good news to me. And, um, of course, it's not just, hey, you made the team, hang up. It's, you know, kind words are shared and um, how she feels like I can really help this team win this World Cup. And it was a great conversation. <laughs> what was your reaction? Um, just my weight was just lifted all the way off my shoulders. You know, I had a good feeling this time around um, that I felt, you know, I'm in form. I feel good. I feel, uh, you know, valuable to this team. And I think for me, you still want to hear that those words. You still want to hear that you're going to the World Cup. Uh, you're going to compete. You're going to you know help your team win. Hopefully. And I know you, so you did some type of celebratory. Mm, I was in my room like this. I was like, let me close the door so my roommate doesn't see me. And then I was like, mm, yes. <laughs> What did you do next? Who would you call? Um, definitely called my husband. Then I called my parents. And then from there, I just wanted to keep it to myself until really the announcement was going to be made. You know, I think it's important to respect everyone getting the phone calls, whichever one you were going to get. And I think I just kept it to myself and kept it in a small group. What did your husband, Pierre, say? to you? Uh, he was so happy. Just, you know, filled with joy. He was there from the very beginning of the cycle of 2015 and how I didn't get the phone call that I got this time around. And I think for him, he was like, I've been in your life since, you know, that time that you had to really pick yourself up. And I think for him, he was like, this is it. You know, this is what you worked hard for. This is what you, you know, recalibrated yourself for. And he, um, yeah, so filled with joy. Let's rewind to 2015. <gasps> so how did you find out back then about whether you had made the team? Uh, I was not in the luxury of my apartment. I was actually in a car with my parents. So you can imagine I'm oh. driving with my parents. They're helping me move into my apartment in D.C. And my phone rings. I go, guys, it's Jill. And I think my parents at that time knew that I was so stressed Definitely wasn't the player I am today. And um, I remember them going dead silent and they like kind of did the, are you going to answer it now? And I'm like, yeah, of course I'm going to answer it. You know, I'm on the phone with Jill and she tells me she's not going to be taking me to the World Cup. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure she obviously said good things about me. But I think after that initial not going to the World Cup, I kind of like put my head back and didn't really fully listen in on what was what else was being said. Hang up with my hang up the phone with Jill and. My parents are dead silent. So it's like a 25-minute ride to my new apartment, and it's just complete silence. Um, yeah, I just remember that day just turning my phone off, not really being, you know, social. A lot of people were texting me, just not about making the team or anything, just friends saying, hey, how's what's going on? And dead, you know, dead silence mm. um, on my end. So it was rough. I think that full day I just wanted to be by myself and my own thoughts and – you know, my, my parents did a gr really great job of, like, giving me space. I think that was the most important thing. Did Jill explain to you that you were the last player cut off that roster? Um, she didn't really have to. I think the way it was set up, it really was between me and one other player. And I always knew that it was a battle of, like, okay, maybe if I do this one really great thing in this training, maybe I will jump ahead of this player. And it was just the feeling and trainings I always felt like, I, I, it's going to come down to the wire, you know. So, yeah. When you look back now four years to that day, what's the emotions that still come to mind? Uh, I get emotional a little bit because it was really hard. You know, I, I, I think people don't realize that it was a really challenging moment in my life because I actually went on to have a really successful professional mm -hmm. um, season. So people seem to forget that, like, I even had that heartbreaking moment, but... You were the MVP yes. of NWSL that year. Mm -hmm. So I, I really feel like I turned the page that year, but it wasn't instantly, you know. I think it took me a handful of weeks to get back training and get back in form and feel like myself again, you know, happy-go-lucky, just showing up to training with a smile on my face. That didn't come, obviously, for weeks after that phone call, but... For me, it was just getting back to the basics, like loving the game again and, and not really getting hung up on I didn't make a roster, but just thinking, okay, I still believe in myself. I know I'm valuable. 
now my my new shift is going to be towards the league. It's going to be about you know being the best me I can be. And at that time, I don't think I knew what position I was going to play. So I think I was just like, tell, coach, tell me where I'm playing so I could just you know get in get in form and, and really help the team. How did you climb out of that? When you say the shift, yeah, that's a good question. I think uh, support from just teammates and and my parents, obviously. Playing in D.C., I didn't see my parents all the time, but they always checked in on me, you know, a handful of times a week just to say, hey, are you staying strong? Are you, you know, getting your confidence back? Because that's really what, you know, the first steps are. Um, and then there's the fairy tale story of how I met my husband. Um, tell us. Yes! I love this story. Um, you know, I, I the, the World Cup began, and I remember thinking, am I going to watch these games? Is it too hard for me to sit here and you know, really be a fan now of of the game and of the girls. And I just thought to myself, yeah, you got to watch the games. You know, it's it's a, it's hard, mm-hmm. but ultimately you got to do it. These are your friends. You were, you know, pushing them in training not that long ago and and now they're off to this amazing event and you they're they definitely need your support, you know. And I remember being in a couple of bars. Uh everyone's cheering, everyone's, you know, go USA and I'm just in the bar kind of like <laughs> not a lot of tears, but definitely Mixed emotions, Had been you know? Hard. Yeah, definitely very hard. And I remember uh, meeting Pierre, and he was my athletic trainer at the time. And I just thought, you know, hey, do you want, are you doing anything? I'm going to go watch the game. Do you want to hang out? And he was like, sure. You know, I, I'd love to watch the games, you know? And one game, we watched the game, and then the next game came, and we were like, let's do it again. It was fun. It was, it was, it was easy talking to him. I think it was... Um, better to watch it with a non-athlete or not a teammate of mine. I mm-hmm. think that's what really helped me was just venting to somebody that wasn't so close to soccer. Um, and then, you know, that's how I got through the whole tournament. You know, we watched the final together, and I remember having tears of joy just thinking, you know, wow, I trained with these women, and they went on to win this World Cup. And even though I'm sad for myself, it was such a pivotal moment, I think, in in the game. And women's soccer then took another leap, and um, I was just happy that I was – so close, in a sense, you know, so. And as you're going through all these emotions of watching the game, because there had to have been these highs and lows. Oh, yeah, highs, lows, all the way. <laughs> <laughs> what is what is Pierre saying to you? Uh, he was he was such a gem. He, uh, he told me it was basically okay to be upset, and I felt so guilty being the one crying in a corner almost in this amazing moment um, during the tournament. And he just, he told me you're, what you're feeling is natural. You know, you, he was like, you were one step away from being exactly where these women are. And, um, you know, the future is so bright for you and just kept making me realize that, you know, my, my journey's not over. You know, this was just one moment that, yeah, it's discouraging, but I have so much life and so much more to give to this game that it's just a little hiccup. Mm. And you hadn't been dating before this. This no. was like the start to yeah, the relationship. Yeah, this was like, we're buddies now, watching the games and just hanging out. And um, and I think through that moment, that's when I really thought, this man is so patient and kind and, you know, just such a true supporter of mine that, you know, we barely knew each other, but yet felt like we knew each other for so long. And um, I think that's when I really started to, to fancy him a bit. <laughs> Fancy him. Fancy him a bit, yes. <laughs> so in it's fair to say in one of your lowest moments, yeah. you found your husband. Yeah, I think, you know, 2015 had a funny way of working out. You know, discouraging moment, April, that's when I got the phone call. Um, started watching the, the start of the, you know, World Cup with my now husband. And I go on and win MVP and Golden Boot that, all in that same year. And I think... Looking back, I'm like, yeah, bummer. I missed out on that World Cup, and it was incredible. But, you know, I'm happily married now. Um, I think that's when my, you know, league form really started. And since then, I always felt like I've I've stepped into every league with the mentality of remember 2015 when I had something to prove. And I think every year that's really what I go into. I go into that crystal who was fighting to – prove that she's this, you know, top player that, you know, didn't get chosen for this roster, but um, I'm going to make sure that that really never happens again. What did you learn about yourself in the process? Um, I learned that I really had to really find myself and, and really invest in myself. And I think 
so many times as athletes, we're waiting for a coach to say, oh, you're a great player. We're waiting for someone to say, oh, you're great. You're doing well. But I think that was a time that I had to really say, Crystal, you're okay. You're good. You know, if you're not going to get it from somebody else, you have to tell yourself that and really invest in, you know, your your sport, your your talent. And I think I had to really just define myself again. I was like, okay, what kind of player do I want to be? What kind of player was I and who do I want to be and what do I want to continue working on? What is the biggest difference to Crystal Dunn in 2015 to Crystal Dunn today? Uh, Believe it or not, I smile a lot more. And I used to smile, I thought, back in the day too. But I think now I just really wake up and I step into every training with, you know, the mentality of, you know, I'm going to put my all into it. If there's a bad training here, if there's a bad game here, okay. What can I do to uh, grow from this moment and just try and be at my best the very next moment that I'm given? You know, and I think 2015, I was very in my head. I was like, oh, made a bad pass or a bad play here, a bad play Mm -hmm. there. And I really thought me, like, making one error was going to be life and death. And I think right now it's about, you know, we're at this top level, you're going to, you're going to have mistakes. You're going to have moments where you might even doubt yourself for a split second. But if you can not live in that time too long, you're always going to bounce back. Do you share that with the younger kids? Uh, and try and help them along? Because that's amazing uh, growth. I mean, I try to. Anytime that I, I really can step out and, and speak to anyone about you know growth or challenges, I think it's so easy for me to go back to that story of 2015 because uh, that was probably the hardest thing I've obviously ever had to go through. And... I think people just need to enjoy life a bit more. I think we get so caught up in, I didn't make this team. I I had a bad game. And I think we all do it. As elite athletes, you have to be a little insane, I would say. (laughs) Um, But I've tried to really recalibrate how I think of myself and how I view every day. And I think, you know, that's, that's where I just remain every single day. I step up on that field. You were talking about this looseness and smiling more. Yes. How much of that is is needed in the locker room with this current team? Because there's a ton of pressure on this group to yeah. repeat as back to back World Cup. There is a title lot of pressure. Holders. There's a lot of pressure. I think um, this group has a wide range of you know laughter and and just a lot of jokes for sure. But I think it is important that um, you know each person has a sense of uh, balance. You know, I think lead athletes were like, yes, we don't want to make errors. We don't want to you know. Uh, be vulnerable in any way on the field. But ultimately, that's how you grow. You have to be okay with, um, you know, accepting challenges, accepting uh, adversity, and just moving on to the next. And I think uh, we all try to do that. It's not easy. Um, I'd be lying if I said every day I'm like, yay, life is great, you know. But ultimately, you know, it's just living a balanced life. Yeah. How would you define your role on the national team now? You know, that is a great question because... Thank you. Well, good job, Jules. Uh, (laughs) Julie and I always make this joke that we're like middle-aged. We're like the middle-aged girls on the team because... (laughs) Julie Ertz and you? Yeah. We just... we That's the joke. That's the running joke because we're not... We kind of feel like we're veterans, but we're not really veterans in that sense. I mean, Julie's been to a World Cup, obviously, and an Olympics. I just an Olympics, but, you know... We're 27 years old, basically. It's like, we're not really young kids anymore. But um, I think I do consider myself more of a leader this time around. I think over the last couple of years, I've found my voice. I feel confident being able to uh, tell Pino, hey, listen, you got to get back and defend. <laughs> you know, I don't think... Especially when you're on my side. Exactly. If you're on my side, yeah, you better be coming back. Um, but I think, you know, a couple of years ago, I'd be like, Pino, can you just help me a little bit? But I think... Um, yeah, I think I found my voice. I think it's important for everyone on the field. I always tell people, I don't care if you're, you know, the youngest player on this pitch. If you uh, are playing, you're no longer an age. We don't see you as an age. We see you as a player who's gonna, you know, provide value to this roster. And um, I think that's really how I carry myself. It's just knowing that if I'm on that pitch, I'm gonna be trying to help others and helping myself at the same time. Who is Pierre? <laughs> who's from France? Your husband. Rooting for this summer. The question of all questions, uh, Crystal Dunn. Well, we've had this talk. I really don't know if he's going to full-on have a French jersey, but I do think he's hinting towards if France is playing in the earlier stages, he might be like, you know, I want them to do well. And 
I'm not against that. I'm not against that. You know, I just think, you know, USA, France, I'm like, listen, the divorce papers will be on hand <laughs> if you make the wrong decision. So uh, I'm all for him supporting <laughs> France in the, you know, the play that they were playing in, um, not playing against us, obviously. But right. uh, for me, yeah, I'm like, root, root for USA all the time. John. And all his family's still in France. Yes. So talk about coming full circle. Yes. You're going to be playing in France in mm-hmm. front of his family. He's going to be there in your first ever World Cup. Yes. I think everything really worked out for the for the craziest way possible. I think, um, you know, I've really embraced the French culture. His parents don't speak a lot of English. So uh, to me, I've emerged in the French culture. And I think it's, it's going to be really cool being there. I picked on... Uh, on some French words. Hopefully I can translate, but I'm not really amazing yet. But uh, no, I just think it's going to be awesome. I'm really happy. I think this this really is my life coming full circle of fighting my way back and being able to play in front of my, my new family now and hopefully them cheering me on. What will be going through your head as you step out onto the field for the first time in the red, white, and blue in your first ever World Cup game? Uh... Yeah, I've envisioned this, I feel like, so many times in the last month or two. I just feel like I can see myself uh, just, again, weight off my shoulder, feeling like this is what you've worked so hard for. This is what all those tears were for, you know, um, battling your way through and, and proving your worth. And I think it's just me wanting to, you know, do my best for this team and, and really put my all out there. And I think uh, just saying the national anthem and uh, tears coming from my eyes. I know I'm going to shed some tears before the game, but hopefully they're wiped out before before the whistle starts so I can see what's going on. <laughs> I know that's the hard part. I know it's like, like I'm oh, too emotional. Oh, okay, okay, the ball's coming. I have to I have to see this. <laughs> Get it together. Yes. Are you ready for our segment called Most Pressing Questions, Crystal? I think so. Let's go. Are you because I know a large swath of the team are, is, okay. large swath of the team <laughs> is, a coffee nut. Um, I have to say I'm not. I can mm. go like three days without drinking coffee and be completely what? fine. I mean, you know my energy's all crazy. I Imagine me on coffee and caffeine, all this stuff. It's like, I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> Nobody else wants me to have it either. So um, I go for the social aspect, I will say, if people are going i don't want to be left out i have huge fomo so i gotta go but you know if no one wants to invite me anywhere that day i'm like okay no coffee for me today yeah <laughs> why isn't your roommate sam Ewis inviting she you right leaves now? me every morning she wakes up really early too so to be to yeah, be she, fair she thinks i'm young like, she's too young to be waking up early yeah sam's an old soul she's an old soul true <laughs> true that's why we all love her go to karaoke song Ah, uh, no scrubs by TLC. Oh, and I always point in the in the crowd to like some random guy, and I feel like they're kind of like, "Whoa, I didn't do anything to you. Why are you so aggressive?" But it's like my motivation on the song, you know. Can we have a little bit? Can I get a beat of it? A scrub is a guy who thinks he's fly and also known as a buster. Always thinking about what he was. He oh. just sits on his broken so No, I don't want your number. No, I don't want. That's the pointing you. part. The pointing at the man. <laughs> yep, and he's always like, "Uh, oh, uh, oh, ma'am, I didn't do anything." Um, okay. <laughs> Why don't you I want know, my number, I ma'am? Know, the poor guy. I'm like, sir, I'm sorry. It's just part of my act. Thank you. <laughs> I'm in character right now. Exactly. You have to find someone, stare, and just, yes, you're my motivation right now. Uh, we used to do the national anthem as our go-to karaoke really? song at the end of a night after one too many drinks. And who and was at, the best at this? <clears throat> at one point, we would literally get on stage and take over the mics of the band. And at one point, I was doing the national anthem. And someone in the back was not standing. And I was like, you, in the back, you stand for the national anthem. And he was like, sorry. Okay, so you have a little bit of aggression in the crowd as well, just like me. Yes. That's okay. Right. That's okay. <laughs> Love that. What is your hidden talent? Hmm. I guess it's not really hidden because I'm like on all these like videos now of me dancing up a mm. storm. Um, go to dance move. Oh, it's funny because Julie changed the question. Uh-oh. The actual question I'd written was best dance move. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. You know me very well. Um, well, nowadays I feel like I'm so old, Jules, because 
people know all these like dance moves and now I have young kids like oh do you know how to do the this or that and I'm like no I've never heard of that in my entire life because they're all Fortnite based well, exactly Fortnite exactly so now Good I'm like Lord. I just follow the kids I'm like okay we got this one now Lost. go in the fu- <laughs> why, do, why do you know the name of it because I have a 10 and 12 year old <laughs> I know them all Orange I'm, Justice yes the Orange Justice that's yeah, the one that's they like, do that one yeah, so that's my deck. Uh, so now I just try to pick up one the kids are trying to teach me nowadays. I'm old now. You, you still got it. <laughs> what are you talking about? I feel like you're very hip. I try. I try. What's the best old school dance move? Um, the Tootsie Roll. <gasps> we do the Tootsie Roll. I was at my brother's wedding recently, oh, and good one. I was just dancing up a storm with my parents, and they were busting out the Tootsie Roll, and I was like. Oh my goodness, I'm now old, just like my parents, doing a Tootsie Roll at a wedding. Oh my goodness. But yes, the Tootsie Roll. (laughs) That's always a go-to. It's a good one. It's simple. Everybody can do it. I get told I'm mom dancing quite often, and that I feel like is a compliment. You know what? Listen, everything comes full circle, Mm -hmm. so whatever is going to be so hip in the next couple years. I'm like, I'm still dancing. That's the key. Care if it's mom dance. Is a cinnamon roll a donut? Crystal oh, Dunn. Oh, goodness. I mean, I would have to say yeah, but I think a lot of people would just, like, be against Boo! it. But I think it's a Crystal donut. Crystal Dunn thinks it's, it's a, a donut. donut. It's a donut. It's a donut. It's a sweet with so many extra things that you don't need, but... Listen. Now, I'm not talking about like the one you like unwrap out of the Pillsbury dough can. No, you're talking home. about the ones that you what? actually would get in like a donut shop. Yeah, a donut shop. It's a donut. A donut. It's it's there in the donut shop. It's a donut. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't put it there unless mm-hmm. it belonged. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Me and you, we're we're simpatico. I knew. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. So I knew I always <laughs> liked you. Um, so in our podcast, we do high low cheer. And we do it around the dinner table with our kids. Okay. So they're high of the day, they're low of the day, and something or someone they cheer for. Mm-hmm. What would be the high, low cheer of your career? And it doesn't have to be soccer related, but it can be, of course. Uh, high. High of my career, obviously, end of 2015, I would say, because I feel like that was just the moment that I realized, like, you know, it's a mental game and you have to, like, be smart in between the ears in order to, like, really achieve what you want to do. It's not about, um, you know, it's not about just falling down and being like, oh, okay, what was me? It's really about putting the pieces together Mm -hmm. and and turning a negative into a positive. So definitely high of 2015. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Because that was the year, of course, you got cut, Mm -hmm. but that was your high the end of the year because you were able to get through it. Yeah. Oh I know. God. It's kind of crazy. Like, I feel it's like almost weird talking about 2015 because I'm like, didn't make the World Cup, but like had a ball towards the end of it. Like, <laughs> I don't know how to speak about this. Um, but yeah, high end of 2015 when I was like, golden boot winner. <laughs> um, And a low. I mean, can I say the same year too? Yeah, of Is course. that weird? No. Low is 2015. I mean, if I could really tell you the phone call and like how I really felt, I was like, huh, in the back of the car with my parents. Making just, the knife into the just, heart gesture. You know what it was too? It wasn't even that moment getting the phone call. It was, they did a show. They didn't do a show this time, but like what they did with the announce, like announcing the players on the team, it was like this whole, God. yeah, like Fox did this whole show, I'm pretty sure. And, that was the moment that I was like, wow, that's a low for me. Because now the whole world can see who's on the roster. And it was more of like a, I'm embarrassed. Uh, now everybody knows. It's no longer my mom and my dad that know. Mm. Um, so I think that moment actually was the low part, not even the phone call. It was just, now everybody knows. <laughs> I feel like crying helps in those moments. Oh, Some people does. try and hold back the tears. No, who would dare to hold back the tears? Like, like, let it go. My tissue box was empty. On to the next tissue box. Like... Yes, I'm not ashamed of it at all. <laughs> Mia brought up a really great point in her podcast. She's like, I just cry in the shower. Yeah. <gasps> so every, you step out and everyone's like, oh, you're just, you're, just, you're fine. What? You're fine. You're fine. You look fine. <laughs> it's like I ball in the shower. Oh, my gosh. What about your cheer? Someone or something you celebrate? Um, definitely my husband. Because... His life story is actually quite interesting, if I can, like, sum it up. Um, he is 
born in he was born actually in Africa, Ivory Coast, lived there for 12 years. Um, and then his family moved him back to France from ages like 12 to 16. And then he hops on a plane and goes to the U.S. at 17 to learn English for one year and then ends up staying in the U.S. basically this whole time. And he just also, he like always talks about how he was just like, I was dropped here, didn't know one lick of English wow. and had to just <clears throat> teach myself what it's like to really survive in a foreign world, you know? And to me, I'm like, wow, we complain about being in a foreign country that we don't understand the language for like more than a week, like let alone right. just... You know, and I just think for survive. Yeah. Like for him, he was like, oh, that's normal, though. That's what a lot of people my age in France did. We just ventured out and our parents let us go and leave the nest. And I was like, wow, that is not how we run things in the U.S. Like I can just see my parents both being like, where are you going for yeah. three months? Like, let alone you You're know, gonna be OK. Honey? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. So um, for him, I just feel like. Yeah, he he's just in, this incredible human being that I've learned so much from, and like I try to take a page out of his book all the time on patience, and I don't have a lot of patience, and he's <laughs> always telling me calm down, things work out in the end, and I think, yeah, he's really just been such an amazing human being for me. Well, when you said that he was the one who who during those moments when you're watching the game together, yeah, was it's going to be okay, and this is. And that's such a healthy thought. This is an okay emotion to have. Yeah. Just don't sit in it for too yeah. long, right? It's okay, but you're crying a little bit too much right now. Can you, <laughs> you know, really? Now we got to flip it. <laughs> now we got to turn it into a positive yeah. energy. I think, I mean, he's a true, you know, soccer lover. He grew, grew up in France, obviously. The French love them some soccer, and they've been so successful, especially on the men's side. Um, and for him, he, he understands, you know, as a player, you want to be on. You want to be on this high at all times. You know, no one wants to say, "Oh, I love when I fail." You know, and for him, I think he just was able to understand. It's all well and good, never, never getting cut, never always having success in your career. But he knew that those were the growing moments. And I think mm-hmm. for him, he was he saw someone who was like, "No, you have so much potential. You you're going to be fine." Mm-hmm. And I think he saw it, and I didn't really see it. And the whole time, I was like, "What do you mean I'm going to be fine? This is the worst day of my life." You know, and. Uh, he always stayed, you know, positive, and it's it's awesome. It's always great to have someone positive around you. Mm, indeed. Yes, Jules. I want to know what a high and a low that you've gone through in mm. your life. Mm. I have to. Th- let's, I have to think about this. <laughs> high? Are you talking soccer wise? Mm, no, you- just anything. Um, having kids is so fun. Get on that wagon, sister. Not yet. Not no yet. pressure. World I don't want to act like your mom. World, <laughs> World Cup to play. Can, An Olympics to play. I know. I got some things that I, I want to check off first, obviously, but I can only imagine. I mean. It's so fun. Uh, There's such good perspective, too, in terms of work-life balance. Yes, and, definitely. And especially as they get beyond four years old when they're not just drunk midgets. <laughs> Falling all over the place. Yeah, where you're you're like, Cliff! (laughs) Someone watch my kid! Oh my gosh. Um, But uh, that would probably be my high. It's just like walking that journey with them. It's been so fun. Um, My low... (sighs) Probably losing, as I always talk about, and yes, I'm not over it, to the... Norwegian national team mm-hmm. in 2000. Mm-hmm. And I'm still a little bitter. About okay, it, well, Crystal. let's not break any windows <laughs> here. Let's. Okay. Well, and this is why mm-hmm. we played so well. Yes. And we just couldn't get it done. It should have been 4 0 at halftime. Mm-hmm. And they this end game, up winning this, this damn game. I know. Honestly, this game is very funny how things kind of either don't work out or very, or work yeah. out. I feel like that's similar to like us in the Olympics against Sweden. It was like a hundred shots to one. Yeah. And I'm like, well, this is how it happens. Yeah. I know. You know, but. But different to you, my heartbreak was more communal, which I think is easier. Yeah. In a sense. Mm-hmm. I hear you. Whereas you're having to go through that on your own and then watch them have this success that you would love to be a part of. And so there's joy in watching them be successful, of course, but there's always that bittersweet, like, oh, but I could have. So 
Yeah. Well, it goes to show you how strong Crystal is. Yeah. But she bounced back. Ooh. Stronger than Life goes on. Life goes on. I have a question for you, Julie. Mm-hmm. What piece of advice would you give Crystal going into France? Please spill all the wisdom. My piece of advice would be to go in just as you are. When you said I'm smiling more, which surprises me because you are the one who I see is the energy. I'm smiling one more time than <laughs> usual. <Yeah. That's> <laughs> but compared to 2015... You, I mean, there's such energy in life to you mm. that you and you need that in the locker room. Yeah. Hence the locker room question mm-hmm. of how is your role because you're gonna have to play that role. Like there has to be. That yeah. was often my role. Yeah. Oh, this, well, I can see that. Yeah. This wonderful <laughs> balance of we're we're having fun and not to lose sight and get too white knuckled yeah. about the fact that there's a lot of pressure here and there's all these eyeballs, but. If we just keep riding this and embracing the pressure and wrapping our arms around it and dancing our way through it and smiling and laughing, and you'll know those moments yeah. where you lock in and you get across oh, for that sure. white line and you're you're locked in, but never lose sight of it's it's fun. I know. And you're Do part you of something feel so like special. going into a World Cup? You, I mean, you kind of just answered it, but like training wise or like anything wise, you feel like you were like, okay, it's now different. I'm going into a World Cup versus. You know, I'm just training for an international friendly. I've no, gotten no. a lot of questions where people are yeah. like, are you doing anything different? I'm like, I'm just trying to perform in this training session today yeah. so that I can put the right foot forward yeah. for the next day, you know? And I feel like weird saying that because I'm like, I'm training for a World Cup. Should I be like on edge doing anything different? No. And I think most of it is just the fact that you change mentally. Yeah. Perhaps. You're ready. Yeah. It's how do you deal with the extra pressure of all the eyeballs and all the attention. Yeah. And if you can deal with that Mm -hmm. and just stay who you guys are and true to that and enjoying the process of playing together, Mm -hmm. that's the key. Because how many times do you get to an event and there's all these extra distractions? People pulling you every which way. Yeah. And we used to be really conscious of, okay, is this going to help? We'll put it in this column, the mm-hmm. help column. If it's going to hurt, it goes in this column. Yeah. <laughs> Everything that's going to get in the way, throw away. Yes. That's so great. I think it's more the mental, because you're going to be physically ready. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love well, you. thank you for that. I love it. It makes me feel happy. Go rock it over there, sister. I will try. I will try. I'll keep the smiles going. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me.